In example one, we have function combination. Monica is making and selling computers. Her business costs $10,000 to set up and it costs her $150 to make each computer. She then sells each computer for $575. First of all, we want to write a function f, which gives the cost to Monica's company. So we'll let c represent cost to Monica's company in dollars as a function of the number of computers made. So we'll let n be the number of computers. Then we see that c equals f of n, and that the cost to Monica's company, it starts with a cost of $10,000, and it costs an additional $150 for every computer that she makes. So we get C, which equals F of N, equals 10,000 plus 150 N. All right, we then want to write a function G, which gives the gross profit Monica makes as a function of the number of computers sold. So gross profit is how much money she receives from, com from customers without taking into account how much money she puts in herself. So we'll let G the gross profit in dollars. Well then, capital G, which is the function of the number of computers sold, we know Monica makes $575 for every computer sold. So G of n equals 575 times n. Lastly, Assuming Monica sells every computer that she makes, write a new function h, which gives Monica's net profit, so p will be net profit in dollars, as a function of the number of computers sold. Write this function in terms of f and g, and give the function definition. Okay, when we know to find profit, we'll take the gross profit g of n minus, or capital G, minus the cost c, which is function g minus function f. So there's h in terms of f and g. That's your first part of your answer. And this means that we are taking 575n minus 10,000 plus 150n. So that equals 425n minus 10,000. And that is the second answer I would be looking for. This was an example of function combination. Because both functions take an input of n and give me something out, and then I want to subtract those outputs. Here's an example of function composition. We have a sphere of ice that is melting. The sphere decreases at a constant rate, and the radius starts, or the radius of the sphere decreases at a constant rate, and the radius starts at 100 inches and decreases by 5 inches every hour. So we already have T represents time in hours, R is the radius of the sphere. In inches. We want to write a function f that gives the radius of the sphere as a function of time. When we know the radius starts at 100 inches and decreases by 5 inches every hour. Okay, we then want to write a function g that gives the volume of the sphere as a function of the radius. v will be volume of sphere in inches cubed. And the volume for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Since this function is in terms of r, then we can just plug in the formula 4 thirds pi r cubed. 